guys, it's Victoria Field, and today I have a very inspiring guest uh, who's going to be joining us here in just a second, pro BMX athlete, brain tumor survivor, Josh Perry, who I had the pleasure of meeting, uh, gosh, a few months ago now, and uh, he's going to be joining us live, and we've got a huge announcement to make, so stay tuned. I am going to be adding him in as soon as he pops in here. And you guys will have to hear his story as well as uh, hear about what we've got to announce. I'm so excited today. Oh, let's try it again here. I'm going to add, bring Josh on camera. Let's go Facebook. There we go. Did that fix it? Oh my gosh, it's amazing. <laughs> and I can hear you through the headphones. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, yay. Uh, I'm so glad we had that figured out. It's like, I can hear myself talking, which I can't concentrate. <laughs> yeah, I remember watching one of these before, and it happened, and it seems to be a common thing. I don't understand, I don't know, so technology. You, gotta, you just gotta, <laughs> it, it's not a live video unless you have technical difficulties. That's what I exactly. like to say. So it's okay. Yep. <laughs> so I'm so excited to have you on live right now. Number one, because we're actually meeting face to face yeah. <laughs> and we've talked many times over the phone and I've had the privilege of, of just hearing your story personally. And, and I, I first sort of came into contact with you actually on Instagram. Uh, hey guys, thanks for watching. We're going to be announcing some really cool stuff here really soon. So stay tuned. But I want to introduce you because when I first sort of found your uh, Instagram page, Josh Perry BMX, right? Uh, yep. I really just became instantly inspired and felt connected to you because I just feel like, uh, well, number one, it takes a lot of courage for somebody to share such a personal, such a difficult story. I like, I can't imagine what you've been through with being diagnosed with four brain tumors, not just one. I mean, this started for you in <clears throat> 2010. Mm -hmm. um, not to mention the fact that two, you're, you're an athlete, which if you've never seen Josh Perry's uh, Instagram page, you should definitely check it out because He's got the most insane posts of him riding a BMX bike. It's really fun to watch. So there's number one, why he's so awesome. But number two, like you've taken this horrible situation and instead of sort of curling up into a ball and just not, you know, living your life, you've taken it and you've done something amazing with it. You've taken it to a whole different level. And not only have you changed your life, but you're impacting thousands of other people's lives in this whole process and you're using metabolic therapy or the ketogenic diet uh you know <clears throat> since 2017 you've been using it as a way to uh really thrive so yeah. i'm not going to steal any more of your thunder and i really want you to tell people sort of how this started for you and what that was sort of like going through as an athlete yeah, no, of course. And uh, first, thanks for the love and support. It means the world to me and to have connected. This is the power of sharing led us to connect and uh, hopefully yeah. many more connections come from thereafter. And uh, some of the, you know, BMX taught me so many things. And one of them is like, you fall down, you get up, you try again. And the cool thing about, like I say real life, but non BMX life is you're not falling from 10 plus feet to from the air to the ground. So it doesn't hurt. Um, it's more just mental sphere. Um, and there, there's, you know, things that happened and, you know, life goes on, but BMX taught me, you fall down. If you want to do something, you try again. And I can apply that to any aspect of my life. We all can. And so that's why I continue to share. And I'm, you know, not really focused on the competition side of BMX anymore, but I'm really using it as a vehicle to share my story, the things I've learned, experienced, and just share. And you mentioned, you know, uh, being, you know, courageous or brave to share. And at first it was definitely one of those things that was just, you know, frightening. Like how do I, like, I, I just felt like more embarrassed, more like I'm a bad person. Um, you know, I, I felt like alone and I felt just, I guess more so embarrassed. Like I felt like weak by sharing these things. Cause like it happened to me, you know, like when we're younger, we think we're invincible. Like nothing's going to happen. And then, you know, who, who thinks about brain tumors or things like that? I think ever happening to them. Like I most yeah. certainly didn't. And so it was a big shock, but as people know who follow me and yourself, like I'm an open book. Like I get to the point now where I don't, it's just who I am. Like, and I was just talking to my girlfriend, Jackie, on the way home from Massachusetts last night about this. Like, my sole purpose in life now, which I never would have ever fathomed getting in front of people speaking or doing things like this, but, like, my sole purpose is to help people because I don't want people to suffer like I did being told that it's normal and you're 21, you're in shape, you're healthy, so the paperwork says, but never got a scan in my brain, um, which we'll talk about in a second what happened there. But you know, just I want to help people. And so with that comes being open and honest about things. So like anyone can ask me anything. and I'm not afraid to share. It doesn't matter what part of my life it is, because at the end of the day, 
you know, like I just want to help people. And if someone can take something from my story, it doesn't have to be BMX or keto or brain tumors. It could be something completely different. Um, you know, it could be about failing a test and my beliefs on there's no failure, it's just an opportunity to learn. Like it's easier said than done. But um, yeah. like I said, BMX, man, like you, you hit the ground hard. And, you know, if you don't get broke off, like you get up, you try again. Like that teaches you some stuff to apply to real life. I say real life, but um, uh, non-BMX life. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty amazing. I, you're, I, we were just talking about this. Your tattoo, I think, is so meaningful. About fear is just a thought, and thoughts can be changed. And uh, okay. uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you. But a lot of people don't have that perspective, and I think that's you know, I, I have so much respect for you, and you are just so inspiring to me in that sense that you know, at the forefront of all this, really, it, it came down to how you chose to view life in your situation. Yeah. And, you know, nobody expects to be diagnosed with a brain tumor. But what you did with the situation has really it impacted so many people in the process, including ours at Metabolic Health Summit. And uh, uh, what what happened to you? I mean, in 2010, you fell like you were talking about, uh, on a ramp, hit your head, had an MRI and life changed. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it's, I just, I gave a talk uh, a couple of days ago at uh, University of Florida to a, a leadership program, you know, this business class. And I just was like, I never ever fathomed sharing my life with people and them taking away value from it. So it's insane. And it's, it's a, it's a huge honor and privilege to do that. And, you know, it came from something that someone, like I get told all the time, like, that's gonna be the worst thing that ever happened to you. And it's like, no, honestly, it hasn't. Like I could have chose that, that route, that perspective, you know, it's a choice, but it's, it's honestly changed my life in so many profound ways that, I mean, of course, we're, we're never going to be who we were yesterday, but I was, set, I was on a path that I don't think I would have been anywhere near, you know, the potential that I've, you know, seen in my life now just because of something that was, you know, being told you're going to die when you're 21, like that changes things. And so, um, yeah, you know, that, that the diagnosis, uh, and there needs to be context before it. uh, it's, it's a must. So, in short, you know, I, I left home when I was 17 from Massachusetts to Greenville, North Carolina, train with Dave Mira. I had a lot of great success at the, you know, the beginning of my career and then thereafter. And I was living a, you know, a poor quality lifestyle, as I call it, like lots of drinking at a young age. I'm in a party town, East, East Carolina University, with all the top pros that are older than me, just doing, doing these things like tons of sugar and sodas and processed foods and just cheap foods. Because at the time, this is fuel. That's all I need. I just need to not be hungry which didn't make sense the rest of the day. I'm being hungry, cravings, crashes, and I'm just falling asleep at 3 p.m. Um, but yeah, I just, you know, late nights, all this stress on top of the physical stress from riding that whether you fall or not, it's, it's you know, hard in the body. And so 2009 comes along. I, I get an invite to X Games. I ride X Games, like the, the Olympics, or not really the Olympics, because so that's the thing now uh, for 2020, but uh, like the Super Bowl of BMX or action sports. And right. it's just a dream come true. Never, ever saw that coming. I mean, I say that, uh, yeah, it, it truly was. And I mean, it, it keeps happening in my life. Like, I mean, that's the power of law of attraction. Like you put these things out there and then if you believe in it, you take that action, better things than you, your brain can imagine happen. And it's just, it's, it's amazing. So, you know, I'm living, living on top of the world now. I'm like first pro win was April of 2009. Then two months later, riding the Dew Tour. It, was, it used to be like a five-stop uh, series around the country. And then next month was X Games. And I just just this love in life, you know, lit literally living my dream and some started traveling international that year and just, you know, blown away at the same time. You know, talk about that poor lifestyle, poor choice lifestyle, you know, all these, you know, terrible food, like products that aren't even really food. Um, I think my idea of food was like lettuce and ketchup on a frozen chicken patty with white bread after a bunch of toaster strudels for breakfast. I'm like, oh, gosh. terrible. And oh, wash man. it down with Dr. Pepper all day, like two liter Dr. Pepper a day, literally because it was cheaper than water. Uh, and then that, do and some then, flips uh, and tricks on a ramp. Oof. Somehow didn't throw up. Oh, my God. Uh, but I was in shape, you know, I'm 21. I'm an athlete, professional athlete. I have a six pack. The doctor's like, yeah, you're, you're fine. You're healthy. You know, keep doing what you're doing. Like, no need to look at your brain. At this time, I'd gone in multiple times, the ER and urgent care. Doc, uh, friends had to drive me to the doctor's office because uh, vision problems, throwing up from the migraines and headaches that are just so debilitating and painful that, you know, I, I couldn't do anything. Like, they had to literally bring me there. And I remember when I was younger, I had uh, similar symptoms that I would just bury my head in a dark, you know, corner of my room with a pillow and just... You know, I thought they were coming back, you know, I never thought that it would be a brain tumor. And, you know, the doctor kept telling me, I'm fine. You don't need a CAT scan, X-ray, MRI, like none of the above. You're a lot of people have headaches. It's normal to hear some pain pills. If you need more, come back. And I never took them because I had a uh, traumatic experience when I was younger. It made me throw up. 
And, you know, funny story with that, the last time I went into the urgent care, they gave me, uh, I think it was like heavy dose uh, Percocets. And I took some on the way home because at this time I'd had enough. Like, I just, it was so bad. It was the one and only time I've ever projectile vomited. And this was in the passenger side of the car, thankfully. I pull over the side of the road and I'm just like in the grass, just like violently throwing up to where now it's just nothing but dark blood. And I'm just yeah. literally thinking I'm dying. Like just left the doctor. They're telling me I'm, I'm normal. I'm healthy. I'm fine. Now I'm like literally waiting for an organ to pop out, you know, and I'm, I mean, it sounds funny talking about it now, but like, I thought I was dying. That's horrible. Um, you know, got home and shook it off. And then a couple of days later I was riding again and I learned a new, a new trick and I was doing a variation of it into the foam pit and felt really confident at the time. We didn't have padded ramps for that specific ramp like we do now. So it was like the foam or the real ramp. And, you know, next step is just you do it. You know, I did 10 yeah. times and perfect. <laughs> let's go to the real ramp. Fear kicked in, overcompensated the rotation of the trick, uh, got sent to my side, whiplash hit my head, got knocked out, um, and then had to get an MRI. Who knew? You know, hit my head. Now it qualified to get an MRI. And I'll never, I'll never forget, like, just sitting in that urgent care office by myself. It's just, you know, like I call it routine <laughs> concussion MRI checkup. And just waiting to hear the report. Doctor walks in and literally he's just like, yeah, Josh, uh, got the MRI report. No swelling, no bleeding. That checks out. And I'm like, all right, cool but there's something in your brain that shouldn't be there. And I'm like, I didn't even, I didn't think tumor, I didn't think cancer, I didn't think anything. I just like, well, what could be in my brain? I mean, literally, like, I mean, I joke about it now, but I'm like, I didn't put anything in there. You know, what could right. be in there? Probably thought he was then, joking at that point. Yeah. Honestly, I, I was just dumbfounded, you know? And then he said, uh, it's a large mass. And at this point, we don't know if it's benign or cancerous. My heart sunk then. And I was like, wow. Okay. And then he went on to say, you'll probably never ride your bike again. And then at that point, everything just kind of slowly started shutting down. And I remember him saying, it'll be difficult for you to walk and do normal things. But if you want a chance at living, you have to have it taken out immediately. Uh, surgery, like there's no other options right now for the size of it. And then I just went blank. And I explained it like a roller coaster of emotions, you know, coming in and out, all these different, you know, why me? What did I do? Like, I'm literally about to die. Like, what do I do with my things? How do I tell my friends and family? Like, all these things and on top of just the best way I can explain it is people talk about out of body experiences. And that's the, the one time, one of the few times I've experienced that where I just, I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. I was sitting here like this. And I just remember just like, it just was, it seemed like I was just looking down watching a horror movie of my life. Wow. And I rushed out and just, you know, sat in the car, eventually called my mom and all that stuff. And yeah, it was, it was insane. And I, I just turned 21. I'm just confused. Like, literally living my dream hanging out with my childhood hero mentor now and friend dave mira and now i'm told i'm gonna die and that everything oh i worked gosh. for is gonna be taken away from me so yeah I can't, it even I can't even imagine going from well number one just uh, even being sort of dealing with that diagnosis so young but two just going from that extreme high to oh my gosh my life w what's gonna happen where yeah. I, I might not be able to ride again i mean that that's like sort of who you are at that time and when, where you're going and what your life is about every day. At what point did you make the decision? Because we talked a lot about um, perspective um, and I think that's everything <clears throat> with you. And that's the reason you've inspired so many people to follow along with your journey, why you've inspired us at Metabolic Health Summit and why we're doing what we're doing that I'll announce here in just a second. Um, but what happened for you to where your mindset shifted and you decided, okay, I get to live life and I get to, you know, choose to make these choices to feel better, live better. You found the ketogenic diet. How did that shift happen for you? Um, so there's a few things, um, you know, uh, on a macro level, like BMX taught me, like, you don't give up, you know, you, you fall down, you get up to try again. It's just, just life. This is how it works. Like, you don't just get on a bike and learn how to backflip. Like, you got to do steps before it. So like it taught me how to set goals. And then, you know, with that visualization was a thing that I wasn't aware of at the time during that riding period. And then after going through the, you know, the surgery and things like that, but now I can see, you know, so on a macro sense, it was just the takeaways from BMX that indirectly taught me about setting goals, getting them to try again. There is no failure. You just learn and, you know, reverse engineer what you just did and make a new change. But then that visualization piece, you know, and, I just, I remember just kept visualizing like what I've been doing, the videos I filmed, the contests I've written and just focusing on that. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking like, I literally wasn't thinking like I'm going to die anymore. Like I was thinking like, I want to ride. 
I wasn't thinking about, and this is basic law of attraction 101. Like I wasn't thinking about what I didn't want. I was thinking about what I did want and what it would take to make that happen. And I had to survive that surgery. You know, I, I was 21. So I wrote, I signed off on all the risks, you know, which paralysis stroke and death were at the top, you know, of potential outcomes. And you know, I mentioned that's the, that's the macro. The micro is three different things. My brother and I being through a ton of obstacles and abuse, uh, our childhood and becoming, you know, who we've become today, um, you know, and then my mom going through colon cancer uh, for like 10 years and then seeing her suffer in and out to becoming, you know, one of the most positive people you'll ever meet, always smiling through it all and hiding a lot of it from me after I moved because she wanted me to progress with BMX and didn't want me to worry, which is phenomenal. You know, it's wow. a thing only a mother can do, I believe. Um, Amazing. And mom. then, yeah, no, I, I mean, she, she, I give her all the credit for everything I'm doing today and what I've done. You know, she, she instilled everything in me and put me on this path. So, you know, that, that was number two. And number three was learning about Lance Armstrong. And I don't care what people say about him. Like, I don't care about, you know, the ins and the outs of that drama. I care about the fact that, he went through, in my mind, something more than I can ever imagine going through with brain, lung, and testicular cancer, and then coming back and then being able to just get on his bike again, let alone win however many times, which people can argue in and out. I don't, I don't care about that. But, like, that, another cyclist, you know, diff different kind of bike, you know, he's not trying to go upside down. But, you know, reading his journey and, like, the fact that he got back on his bike, all I needed to know was what he went through, and then he got over it and he started riding again. That's, that's it. So... You know, those, those pieces all just kind of combined to where it was, uh, I think I had like a two-week period from the diagnosis to the surgery. Um, Dr. Freeman at Duke University, he got, he actually moved patients out of his schedule to get me in that because he was like, yeah, you need this out now. Like, you wow. can't wait. You know, these patients can wait, but you can't. And so that was pretty, pretty amazing. But it was really this, this shift of like, you know, victim mentality. Like, I, I talk about, you know, there's, there's a choice. Like, one of my core beliefs is you have a choice in victim mentality and path or survivorship and a survivor doesn't give up a survivor doesn't think oh i'm done like a survivor thinks like how how can i troubleshoot this how can i get past it and you visualize the things you want so there was this this shift and i don't remember really when it happened but i remember i just kept focusing on these key elements i brought up and just what i wanted to do and i i was like i'm not done like i'm 21 like i've only been professional professionally competing for like four years now um, I, I have so much left to experience, like, you know, like I can't, I can't go now. And so I just added all these things up and just focused on what I wanted ultimately. And that's, I mean, it's simple as that. It's just, it's not that easy, but, um, yeah. you know, <laughs> right. Not the average person I, really. Um, but you know, the fact that you did do that, you found the ketogenic diet and, and really have been using nutrition now as a metabolic therapy, if you will, mm -hmm. how is finding this nutrition approach changed your life, changed really the course of your path at this point uh, how, how has that changed for you whether it be physical symptoms to literally just being able to connect with thousands of people around the world because you're sharing your story and finding this new low not new it's been around for like 100 yeah. years but <laughs> this low carb approach uh, yeah. how has that you know changed your life I mean, every way you mentioned and some, it's changed. And I think most importantly, it's changed my mindset, which was the, you know, we talked about this earlier. Um, the way it worked out for me was like, oh, nutrition is important. Blew out my knee a couple of years later. Oh, fitness is important. And then along the way, I've been learning from different people about this mindset piece in different, you know, beliefs or doctors and the, the, all these things. And I'm like, wow, mindset's most important. So, I mean, with my, you know, working with clients, it's like, talk about what do you want and why like and we got to, it's mostly mindset you know but uh that's that's how it worked for me and i believe it's mindset and one of the most you know important things i believe finding the ketogenic diet or even before that finding about low carb you know high fat from dr perlmutter's work was just really this sense of empowerment and freedom from all this nonsense that we're fed and told literally fed and figuratively fed um and then being told that suffering is normal and then learning that there's another, another way. It's just, it's up to you. At the time, I felt like I was alone because I was like, well, you know, Dr. Perlmutter is, is writing about this and he's sharing about his experience with his patients and I'm looking it up, I'm finding all this stuff. But like none of the doctors ever once asked me what I was eating or what I was doing with my life or where my mental state was and denying me to look at my brain, which I learned about Dr. Daniel Amen's work and like how he mentioned like, most people don't look at the brain like as a, you can't see it. You don't think that you're harming it. And I talk about that all the time. Like it's one of the only things that people think, you know, like there's no effect on it from anything we do. So I think the most important thing is perspective. It taught me 
um, even before keto and learning about low carb, high fat, you know, the brain tumor diagnosis taught me this perspective piece. And I've always, like I talked about earlier, I've been stubborn and wanting to challenge things and like, you know, challenging the status quo with health. It's really what's, you know, done it for me. And like the ketogenic diet and lifestyle has really helped me empower myself to not think that suffering is, you know, the norm and that what people are telling me that I don't agree with and I'm not experiencing is not the norm. And then I can share that with other people. Like we talk about my friend Miles, you know, like he went from three to five seizures a day to now he just took, um, I actually met, just uh, saw him the other day, but he was like, yeah, I haven't had a seizure in three weeks. And it went from like one every week or two to now he hasn't had one in three weeks. And if he does get them, they're not as severe. They, they're not as you know, intense or as long in duration. And he's just fine. He's okay with that happening every now and then. Wow. But like, if it wasn't for finding Perlmutter's work and then getting into the ketogenic diet, I don't know what I'd be doing. And I definitely wouldn't have connected with people like yourself and Miles and like been able to help people, which I never fathomed. You know, I just sat on this journey to ride my bike. Like I saw Dave Muir on TV and I wanted to do that. And I became friends with him. And now I've done all these other things and I'm just reverse engineering my path in BMX to the ketogenic diet and lifestyle. And it's amazing. But I think, yeah, to sum it up, the most profound effect that it's had on my life is just that sense of empowerment and perspective and not being a victim and suffering because so-and-so is saying it, it's true. And I, people tell me that, and I'm like, find a new doctor. Like, there's no reason you should be told, no, you can't have a scan, which people tell me all the time, when you have health insurance or you want to pay for it out of pocket and that there's nothing you can do. I've had, you know, friends that are like, yeah, just, the doctor told me to just go have a beer and a burger, you know, like a burger with a bun. Uh, and that's it. And he's, you know, he challenged that and found keto as well. And so, yeah, it's, it's insane. But that perspective piece. It's all, it's all, I mean, perspective is huge. And I know you've talked about how mindset is at the forefront and nutrition and, and everything else. And just to see you on social media, I mean, that's where I found, first found your channel was through Instagram. And I was just like, gosh, this guy's taking such a really difficult diagnosis, a uh, completely life-changing diagnosis and has turned it into something so positive. And I know you say, I don't want to just inspire people. I really want to help people shift their perspective. Well, I, I really want to talk now about the big announcement uh, that we want to make because you have completely shifted our perspective at Metabolic Health Summit and really inspired us to think about sort of outside of the box and, and then some. And I remember when you first brought this up to me over the phone and you had asked me about this, or you, you had this idea. And I, I at first was like, how are we going to do that? But that would be really amazing if we could. And I think that, you know, you are such just an incredible example and a, a really a beacon of light for people in this space to show what is possible, even when you're facing a life-threatening diagnosis. And so we're hosting a gala dinner on Saturday night, February 2nd, uh, 2019, Metabolic Health Summit. You can get tickets to it separate from the general admission tickets. Um, so if you don't have a general admission ticket, which I do recommend getting because you're going to get to listen to all the presentations. Josh will be there listening in, and it's just going to be an incredible experience. But Saturday night, we've got a gala dinner for a great cause, the Charlie Foundation, Max Love Project. 50% of California-based ticket sales will be going to those two nonprofits. And as I mentioned, Josh has inspired us so much that we've decided we're going to build a 65-foot ramp, BMX <laughs> ramp, inside the ballroom at the Renaissance Long Beach, Josh is going to be sharing so much more of his story and going to be performing. And I could not be, and we could not be, Dr. Angela Poff, Dominic D'Agostino, all of us uh, at MHS could not be more honored to have you there and really showing people in the keto community what's possible when you shift your perspective. You really focus on yourself from the inside out. So thank you, Josh, for, for being there with us. I, I could not, I can't even believe I've held it inside this long <laughs> and we're finally getting to tell people but we're so excited yeah no i'm stoked too and it's it's funny because i almost didn't ask you about it because i was like eh, i don't know the building probably won't work or i don't know if they'd be interested or it's too late you know and i was like yeah well let's just try it send it and just ask and it worked out so i'm i'm i mean i mentioned this earlier i'm, I'm so honored and privileged to be able to combine you know, uh, two passions of mine and one to be able to share BMX with a crowd that may have never seen it or at least hasn't seen it in person. And I know like with the, the building and the ramps to be a little bit smaller than what we normally perform on, but at the least, you know, to be able to showcase something that has saved my life and transformed me into who I am today with something that I'm, you know, completely passionate about and have devoted my life to now. Like, 
I'm so excited to be able to, to, be able to <laughs> combine those two. And, um, and I, can't, I can't thank you enough for, you know, going, going with my wild idea and then making it manifest into reality. So I'm stoked. Absolutely. I love wild ideas. And I love, yeah. <laughs> I, I love, that's honestly what sort of connected me to you is that this guy really thinks outside of the box. And that's what we're really trying to do at Metabolic Health Summit and bridging that education gap between the science, the real world. And you're such like a beautiful example of that. When you, you know, take the science, you, you take such a solid, positive perspective and you put it into action. I mean, I, I don't know that there is a better way to kind of showcase that. And, and so it's going to be pretty, it's going to be pretty incredible. And he says a smaller ramp, but it's like 65 feet and six foot high. <laughs> and uh, he's able to do flips and tricks. And if you've not followed him online, Josh Perry BMX on his Instagram, and then also on uh, Facebook. Oh my gosh. Like it's pretty incredible to watch. He's going to be performing with all wheel sports, which has been on America's got talent. So when you first brought that up, I was like, that sounds crazy, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and just the whole team, uh, you know, Angela, Dom, all of us are so excited to have you. And it's such an honor and just to be there all weekend with us and just sharing your love for BMX, but also showcase, showcasing your story and the, other, the, the stories of the other people that you've impacted at this point. I mean, you were just, just talking about Miles, who's yeah. been suffering from seizures, and his life has changed. And I think that sharing this in information and really focusing on education and getting the right information out to the right people and bringing all the top scientists and people together in the same room, we all have to be a part of this to move this whole move, this, this thing forward. I mean, it yep. really has to be a group effort from the ground up, from, from patients, from people like yourself to, you know, the, the top down, it has to be sort of a joint effort in this. So we thank you for, for all of, the things that you're doing in the space and beyond. And I know you do a lot of, of speaking and you do coaching. Where can people find you for more information on uh, what you're doing and with the ketogenic diet and beyond? Yeah, no, I mean, first, thanks for the love and support. It means the world to me and to have this connection. It's, uh, it's pretty insane. So thank you. Absolutely. Um, thank you. <laughs> as far as people connecting with me, I mean, everything, you know, any kind of social media that I have and news is just Josh Perry BMX. Um, the website's just joshperrymx.com. Actually, um, joshperry.com, um, a domain troll wants two grand for it. So for right now, I'm just going with uh, joshperrybmx.com for like 15 bucks a year. So it's, it, <laughs> gotcha. it works out pretty well. But um, yeah, I, I, yeah. Um, just everything across the board, Josh Perry BMX for now. And um, yeah, I, I'm super responsive uh, to the best that I can. I'm most active on Instagram, but I do my best to respond to every single comment I can find and DMs and may take me a day or two, but I make sure it's a priority to respond to everyone. Um, and then, yeah, like, to, like I said, it's just such an honor and a privilege to be able to perform and connect. I mean, just attend, you know, but also perform. And, you know, my, my choice to walk away from competition, uh, 2016, October was my last contest. And it was, I ended a great year. I was right after ACL reconstructive surgery and I ended up 10th in the world and I was stoked. But that diagnosis the third time was 2017 it was february so it was right after it and it really set things in motion to where it wasn't negative anymore it just was like yeah what do i do with this how do i help people how do i help myself like thinking of all these different things and it led me to my you know being really clear my purpose to help people so now i still ride you know all the videos are current on my my page and everything but i really want to use bmx as a vehicle to um, you know, with the younger generation, at least capture their attention and really show them, you know, what I've gone through and what I've learned is important um, and what I believe is important. So that way they can make, you know, better informed decisions at a younger age, but then also be able to take the information that most people don't want to even try to understand. They just want to know, like, what do I do? How do I do it? And, you know, with me wanting to know the, the real how and how things work, you know, I'm, I'm constantly learning. I, I mean, we always are. But to be able to use BMX to get that information out and to connect with people like yourself and then everyone involved, um, it, it's such a crazy thing to me that I never imagined doing. And um, I can't thank you and everyone else, you know, that we're we're all connected with now, you know, that that um, you know support my my decisions and my choices and you know want me to be a part of the movement. And it, it's just yeah, it means the world to me. And so if I can help just one person, I mean, I'm helping more than one person. And I can't I can't you know um, be anything but grateful for that. So. Thank you. And I'm, I'm excited. I'm so stoked. <laughs> We're so, so excited. And thank you for your work and, and sharing your story. And actually, we've got somebody watching here too, Andrew Scarborough, who's actually shared his story with brain cancer. And 
both of you guys and, and just the people who voice up about this and what they found with nutrition and how it's changed their life. It's such an important thing in this community. So to tell you that I, you know, appreciate it, all of us appreciate it. It's necessary for this, this movement to continue to roll forward is an understatement. So uh, if you guys aren't following Josh, definitely give him a follow, check out his website and join us at Metabolic Health Summit because he's going to be there. He's going to be performing at the gala dinner that benefits two incredible nonprofits, Charlie Foundation, Max Love Project. And you can actually buy tickets for 165, which 50% of those tickets uh, from California residents go to those two nonprofits um, separately from general admission. So if you guys want to just come for the dinner and have a ketogenic culinary dining experience, it's semi-formal, a lot of fun and watch Josh perform, <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of fun. So thank you, Josh, for taking the time out today to make this announcement. I have been waiting to share this for a <laughs> long time. And I know you have been uh, excited to share it as well. So we're, we're just so excited to be partnering up with you on this. And uh, yeah, excited to see you in January. <laughs> yeah, no, likewise, I'm, I'm pumped. And uh, yeah, I'm stoked that it worked out. You know, it was a crazy idea I threw out there, but I've learned, you know, if you don't ask questions, you don't get answers. So I figured I'd try. So I'm stoked it worked out and uh, can't wait for it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, awesome. Thank you so much, Josh. And uh, we'll be seeing you really soon. And thank you guys all for watching. If you haven't checked it out, metabolichealthsummit.com. We have a Cyber Monday special, Cyber Monday MHS, and you can get 150 bucks off general admission. So take advantage of that. And Josh, I will see you. And I'm sure I will talk to you over the phone soon yep. as we prepare yeah, for sure. this ramp inside a building. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm stoked. I'll be out there a day or two before as well. So we'll be able to awesome. hang out for a minute. But yeah. Awesome. We'll have to, we got to get in some practice, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. All right, cool. Thanks, Josh. We'll see you soon. Thank you all for watching. Thanks. Have a good night. You too. All right. Bye.